Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in Elm Creek. Oh, that's to cancel the unload function. Right, I'm with you now. I understand, I was being a bit slow. So we go, we got just these three bales here. We'll take these three in round towards where the pigs are going to be. In across there and bounce <laughs> right around there in a very sensible fashion. Where does the straw get loaded for the pigs? Because pigs do use straw. I assume, therefore, that the straw must go in there where the feed goes. All right, so we you press Y to start them unloading. Unload bales. Ah, uh, you press the right mouse button to do that. Press Y again to unload them. And they go into the pig pen. Let me just jump down here and have a look. Owned by me. And there we go. We've got 25,000 litres of straw in here. Right. Next, we will go back up through here and we will go and get the big bales. So you've also got to press Y again to reset the whole thing like that. Then you can switch it. You can use B and that puts it into operating position. So this is going to be the big bale. So we're going to pick up the three bales that are in this field and then we want to run down to the field right down the end and we want to get the other big bale that's down there. Uh, Actually, there might be two, possibly even three big bales down there. And we'll bring those back up this way. And then once that's been done, we can... Actually, we'll carry on with the baling then. Because all the rest of it is going to be the little tiny bales. And we're going to do everything else with the small bales. And then we'll stack those up near the pig pen. Just put, put a heap of them there. Um, and then next month, we should be able to start doing the harvest. So I got that one, there's one there, one over here, uh, this corner as well. We've got quite a few of these. There's more here than I thought. Right, that is all of them. Bell loader only allows one size at a time. Okay, so I'll press B and then I will just bring these. Where are we going to put these? Put them... Put them over here somewhere, like this. Doesn't really matter. There, we'll, we'll, we'll drop them right there. So I press Y, and then I can use the mouse button, the right hand mouse button, to move them around however I want. So I put them over to there. Press Y again, and then Y a third time to reset it, and that's done. Drop off there, and let's go and get going with the bailing. I have come back to the game after. Um, having a break so I am now on a new recording session and uh, the crops aren't ready to harvest there and over there the soybeans and the corn as most of you probably already know what I'm going to do is we're going to fast forward until October I mean we're right near the end of the first day of September but before I do that there was another mod there's there's quite a few new mods um most of them are machinery and, and stuff like that. But there is one in particular that I wanted to take a look at because I thought it might be quite cool. I've just got to figure out where it is in our list. It is a pallet sorting slash loading system. And it does look really, really awesome. It looks absolutely fantastic. It looks like something that could be really useful in all kinds of ways. I just got to find it. And I have absolutely no idea. Oh, there it is. I can say I have absolutely no idea where such a thing might be um, placed. Auto Palettes Manager V Basics. Very Basics. Basics. 0 0.05. 0 0.04. Oh, I see. Ah. So, you've got different ones that take these different things. So, you've got planks, bread, cereal, flour, I'm assuming all three types of oil, and 
uh, cake, and then this one's got these items. You've got eggs in there and cheese. This one has got the grape products. That's... Oh, wait, is that flour? So what's that? Oh, butter. That's butter. Cheese in there. And then honey. And then here you've got olive oil. Well, what oil is that? Is that just rapeseed oil and sunflower oil? Or is sunflower oil in somewhere different? It could be in somewhere different. Um, why has it not got tomatoes out on that? That's weird. It doesn't have tomatoes out on that picture there. You got tomatoes here. Tomatoes and strawberries. And then whatever that one is. And then you've got different ones here. Automated system that allows you to have all the products stored on pallets in order. Right, this is weird. So I've, I've no idea what this one actually does, but this does represent the three things that we've got here. The four things. We've got honey, we've got uh, tomatoes and lettuce and strawberries. So what I was going to do is I was just going to test it out by dumping one down there. And we'll see what this automated thing does. I've absolutely no clue other than that. I don't really know what it does. I don't know anything about it. I've just seen this thing in here. So we've got no active production storage is empty on there. If I press R and I go into it, Auto Palettes Manager just has the recipe for those and then those come out. So does that mean I have to have all of them coming in in order for all of them to come out or what? Because I've got, I can buy the items coming in. So what we'll do is, there's our lorry right there. Actually, we had the SEK trailer. We'll use the SEK trailer because that's a smaller one and that's going to make it a little bit easier for us to kind of manage. So we want to find a small tractor to tow that one around. I think this is a suitable small tractor. Oh, also, 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 um, one more thing. They have added in, and a lot of people have been asking for them, and so giants have added in their own mods of these. The Borgolt, 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 whichever you call it. Um, they've added in these, the huge, great, big ones. There's uh, that cultivator right there, and then there's the seed drills over here. You got that one, you got that one, you got the, the air cart, you got this one over here. There's a 30 meter one right here. So they've now added them all in as the separate mods rather than as um, part of the base game or part of a DLC or anything like that. They've just added them all in at around the same time that they did the DLC for the really, really small tractors. So it seems that they might actually be listening to what the players want. We, they released that um, DLC. A lot of players started hollering that they wanted big stuff, not small stuff. So they released the, sm the big stuff completely free of charge, which I thought was pretty cool. I thought that is sort of a sign that they are listening to the player base. I know there's a lot of complaints. I know there's a lot of people not happy with different things that they do and so on. But I think that's a pretty good sign that them releasing those just free of charge, adding them in because the players have been making a bit of noise about it. I'm going to take that as a good sign. Now, this one has been updated, so we've got auto-loading, um, or auto-straps on here now, which I actually think is pretty cool. I quite like it. So I'm going to go and get six from there. I'm going to take six from this one as well, which is everything that we've got on this one. And I've asked, I asked you last week what map you thought I should go and use for leaving here for starting this city idea, this building a town idea. Well, I also asked you to say whether or not you thought it was a good idea, and you all said it was a good idea. I don't think I had anybody say, no, I don't like this idea at all. I, getting a forestry map and turning it into a town, a lot of you seem to have a lot of love for this idea, and I'm absolutely thrilled to bits with this, because it means that I'll actually be able to give this one a go. Um, also, on top of that, uh, I asked which of the three, Chainsaw Valley, Umbreon Valley, or um, the other one, uh, Rizu Forest, which one you thought I should use. I personally thought Rizu Forest would be better, but... Well, I was going to say 
like I'm getting a lot of sort of indication that people don't want Rizu Forest, but that's not the case at all. There seems to be a fairly even spread between all three of them so far from what I've seen. I've done a like a private question on um, my Discord, and yeah, it genuinely seems like people are wanting just all of them, all of the above, and I'm quite happy with that. So it just means that I can go through and I can pick the best one. Now, what happens here? I bring that over onto there. It's starting to empty stuff out. And it's just jumping the pallets in there. Putting them up onto the racks. Putting the full pallets up. So it's not actually doing anything different. It's just somewhere to allow you to go and store them all by the look of it. So we'll let all of these empty out onto the rack. Uh, let's go in here and have a look and see what it's doing. It's saying storing on all of these. So I've got some leftover tomatoes, leftover strawberries right there. So it doesn't put all of it mixed together onto a pallet. It just kind of does the whole lot out. Right, I want to bring all of that lot on as well. I'm going in there. I'm not getting any more pallets coming out. And the last little bit in there. In here, we've got 800. We've got 2,999. It really annoys me when it does that. Um, which means that it's not actually going to let us take out the final pallet of lettuce. And it's done it with the tomatoes as well. 999. Why does it do that? I really don't know why it does that. It's irrit it irritates me immensely when it does that. Now, does this mean that the pallets that we've got out here... Can I... Can, can I just go and take them and load them back up again? I don't know. We will find out momentarily. So let's drop that one there. Yes. I can just go and take the new pallets. And it drops them all out. But now I've got some that I can't actually go and collect. Plus I've got two pallets of tomatoes up on the top there. That I can't reach either. Right. I like this one in theory. But in practice it seems to. Well I don't know. I'm, I'm. On the face of it I'm not a fan of this. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of this one on the face of it. It's. It seems alright. I guess if you've got a lot of really small stuff coming in. It's a good storage system, and it'll hold the stuff there. It's just, you, I mean, yeah, I guess you can use your pallet forks and so on. I'm very much about the auto load anyway, so I would want to be able to auto load to move stuff out of here. And this, I mean, I'm assuming it would be all right with auto loading because we've got the auto load from the trailer over there. We'll have to wait and see on this one. We'll see how this pans out. So while that one is just finishing off, it's unloading. Actually, it's not got much to go anyway. Um, so yeah, it does seem that you all really like the idea of me going on to my next map and having it as kind of a city building or a town building exercise. Now, a lot of you did say in the comments to start with Chainsaw Valley. Now, I went and had a look at Chainsaw Valley, and to be honest, if I'd had a look first, I probably wouldn't have even suggested it. Rizu Forest is still my favorite one because it's the most level one. Umbreon is kind of halfway between, but Chainsaw Valley has got a lot of steep hills, it would be very difficult to actually turn it into a town. That would be a significant challenge. Now, not it would mean a lot of landscaping as well, so I'm not sure what people would think of that one. So I, I want to hear more of your thoughts and feelings on that. Um, Rizu Forest seems to be fairly level. Hang on a minute, let me have a drink. Okay, so Rizu Forest seems to be fairly level ground. Umbreon is undulating but not too bad. Chainsaw Valley has got a lot of steep sided valleys. A lot of steep ground there. It would be a significant challenge to turn it into a town. So you've got three levels of difficulty basically. Um, and I'm getting marginally more calls for Chainsaw Valley than I am for the other two. I've now gone and posted a 
Um, a question on Discord as well for anybody that's in the Great Book of Names to see what your opinions are on it. And in that one, um, Chainsaw Valley is slightly less popular than the others. So, really, I am sort of getting a, um, a, a balance between all three of them. Which surprises me. I wasn't actually expecting that. I wasn't expecting all three of them to sort of be coming up um, fairly evenly balanced. I was expecting one to sort of be quite a lot more popular than the others. So it, it seems that most of you aren't overly concerned about which one I do. But most of you... Well, any, well everybody that commented on the subject seems to really like the idea of me doing this in the first place. So... You do like the idea of me doing the, um, doing the idea of, of taking a forest room map and building a town out of it, especially on this series, as this one is the one where I can play around. I can use all kinds of mods. I can use the mods that are completely unrealistic to do it. And there seems to be a significant number of you that really do like that. Okay, so I've got 25,850 in food, which is in the pigsty. So I think as I've got food in there, I want to see what the balance is. Because I know that like you're supposed to get a balance on all the food, aren't you? So I'm not really sure putting in all that wheat was a good idea. Like, how does this work now? It seems... Weird. Uh, that's, oh, that's slurry there. I don't want to be going to that one. Let's go round behind here. And I want to go here. Open the door. There. Right, we've got the German land race. At zero months. Gestation, four months. Six months until they can start reproducing. So we could get some at six months. We've got the Bentham... Bentham... Black Pied, Corn, Wheat, Barley, Canola, Sunflowers, Soybeans, Potatoes, Sorghum, Sugar Beets. Additionally, they require water. This is a piglet. I actually like Berkshires. They're my favourite ones. I used to have one. Well, I didn't have a Berkshire. I had a large black, but they're very similar. So we'll get... Let's Bite the bullet and start buying a few of our pigs in. So we go like this. We'll go. We'll put this up to. Hmm, let's put up to thirty pigs like that, and then buy. Animals have been purchased, and then I can just do that again. So I just go like there. Buy. Okay, like that. So you can just then. Nope. There is where I need to go. Select. If I go enter, no, you got it. You have got to press the space bar. Right, there's ninety pigs. One hundred and twenty. One hundred and fifty. Let's go with one hundred and fifty pigs to start off with. Yep, definitely looking good. They're making pigs of themselves in the food trough in there. That's fantastic. That's what we want. Uh, so we are, and you know, I'm going to go and turn this lorry off because I got my headphone on and it, my headphones, and it's just coming through one side and it's starting to drive me wild. I don't like that. It's, yeah. Because I'm standing here, it's directional, and so I've only got this noise in one ear and it, it's weird. So let's have a look in here. We've now got this one. So we've got straw right there. Base food. 49%, grain 24%, total effectiveness in here. So I got 25,000 litres of food in there, and then you got protein and you got root crops. So we want to get the mixture of everything going in here. So I think we're going to want to go and just have a look in our grain store a minute and get what we can out of there. And then once we've done that, we've got, because there's some barley in there, and there's also a little bit of canola in there as well. I don't think there's much else. But that at least is going to get started, and then we can go and put some um, corn in there as well. But it does seem like, because previously there was a limit on what you could put in for each type. This doesn't seem to have a limit of what you can put in for each type, which I think is going to make life a bit difficult for us. So I'm going to just start off with that one. 
and take all of the canola. I'm going to go and drop that in. This could end up making things, making it a bit more difficult to manage the pigs if we're putting in too much of one. We're not going to be able to fit any of the other in, and I don't like that. I also don't like getting stuck on the bridge. i got to swing out round a bit more, that's all. I should have left a little bit more room here, or else I should have come in from the other way. Okay, let's just smash the front of the truck on the side of the bridge. There we go. And bring you round over this way. Nope, can't swing right in. I've got to bring it back up. Oh, actually, no, it... Oh, yes, it does come up with the tip. Right. So it tells me that I can tip into there. So have a look at this, and... There we go. So we've now got 4,822 of that one, and that's a total effectiveness in here. So what I want to do next is I want to go and get all of the barley that we've got, because we've got corn, wheat, barley. I want to go and get every single little bit of barley that we have, and I want to drop it all in there for the pigs to see if it stops us from putting in the base food allowance as well, or if there is a limit to each type of grain. Because this is something that I don't know about. I'm sure that many of you already know all about this, but I don't. This is all new territory to me. Uh, we're going to, we've got sorghum in there, so I could drop sorghum in there as well. But then I'm going to start off by dropping in as much barley as I possibly can, which is all of the barley that we've got. It's everything that we've harvested, so we will dump everything in here. Fill this one all the way up to the very brim. Well, not all the way up to the very brim, because we've only got 42,000 litres of barley in here. There, right. We will take that lot and we run it round. And then tomorrow we are able to start harvesting the soybeans and also the corn. And then once we get started on that, I'll also do a little bit of baling as well. Because we've got some wheat straw that we need to bale up. There's a bit here and then there's a bit over in that other field. Uh, okay, now I will tip out here and I want to have a look in here. So that's on 25,000 in there. That's putting everything in there just as grain, which gives us 24% effectiveness. Right, and that's the total amount of food that can go in there. So does that mean the productivity will be lower? So you've actually got to like, physically balance it yourself. You do need to. You can't just fill everything up with grain, with wheat, because it will fill the whole food thing up, and then you're stuck. Not sure how I feel about that. I kind of like it, because it means that, you know, you, you've got to sort things out yourself a little bit more, but at the same time, I mean, or does it, you know, keep the pigs at 100%, but it just uses the, the grain a bit faster? You know, if you use the base food... That's 49%, so the pigs will grow 49%. They'll, they'll sort of use it a little bit slower than they will the other. We can't put oats in. We can put sorghum. We've got some beans already. Let's put the sorghum in. There's another 12,000 there. I know that would have been a cash crop, but, I mean, we're not going to worry about cash crops at the moment. We're going to stuff everything we can in for the pigs. Um, I'm going to speed things up a little bit as well, because I think that's let's go 120 times speed, just until we've finished dumping everything we've got here. And there we go. Start tipping that in. That should, I think that's grain as well. Oh! Sorghum is base food. Ah. Aha, uh -huh, that changes things. I had no idea. But why did it stop me from tipping? Why did it stop tipping just then? Oh, I must have... Maybe I moved. 
Now it stopped tipping because I'm on 85,000 litres right there. So we're full on that bit. We've got a little bit of protein in here. Loads of grain. And the base food is on 49%. So I've no idea what will happen with the rest of this. Right, this, this is... It's kind of strange the way things are laid out here. I'm going to... Actually, you know what? We can leave that one hitched in because by tomorrow we should be able to do something with that. So I'm just going to step down here. Let's turn that one off, shall we? Shut you off a minute. Let's... Let's... Let the pigs just carry on as they are. I'm going to do a shift Z and we're going to skip the night so we can see what will happen next. I'm aware that a lot of you will know about this, but not everybody will know about this. Not everybody will know how the pigs operate and how, how all this works. So this will be educational for a few people, including myself. It's always good to have educational. Right, so we have over on the horizon over there. First up in here, it's used up the base food. Ooh. There's something I didn't actually check was to see how fast it uses up any of these. So we got 3960, 67554, and you know what? There is a faster way to do that. 67507, that was 3960. It's using all three of them. It is using up all three of them. I'm assuming it uses the base food at a faster rate than it uses the other ones. That would be my guess. Productivity is up at 93%. So it doesn't change on the productivity. But my guess is the speed at which it uses up these foods. Not really sure. I don't know. I don't know how it's balanced out. Someone explain to me in the, in the comment section how it's balanced. Because I'm a little bit slow and um, simple and I, I, I don't get it. Right, everything is ready to harvest. So let's first go back into the pigs a minute so that we can just... 3885. Okay, it's... I don't know how fast it's using this stuff up. I'd have to go back and sort of have a look at the, the video afterwards. But anyway, we are middle of October so I'm going to slow the time down now I'm going to go about all the way down to one time speed I'm going to tip out the little bit of sorghum that is in here so that I can have an empty trailer for doing um, other stuff such as gathering up the crops the soybeans we can get started on that so let me skip over here like this that one can stay right there, and I can swing on round like this, and we'll pick this one up. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.